don't think most Californians really understand yet is who is actually driving this initiative, who's funding it. These two Texas oil companies, Tesero and Valero Corporations, they are the primary sponsors of the initiative. 96% of the funding for the Prop 23 campaign is coming from the oil industry. And why are they sponsoring this? Well, they make a ton of money from the status quo. Valero and Tesoro. I think these guys think they're on a roll. They've made $9 billion between them in California in the last five years. They think they can come in here and change the rules about how they're allowed to produce energy and what kind of pollution they're allowed to create with money. Paying fines for pollution cuts into their profit margin. Having to retrofit their refineries so that they put out less pollution costs them money. Prop 23 is basically saying, I'm a rich oil company and I don't have to be accountable to the people of California. I can buy my way out of protecting human health. At the most basic level, the thing that we need to do to solve climate change is to stop emitting carbon dioxide. Most of the air pollution come from combustion of fossil fuels, whether it's coal or oil or gasoline. Burning less fossil fuels will result in cleaner air. I've been involved in environmental matters for a long time. In the Reagan administration, we had the problem of the ozone layer. And then in the first Bush administration, confronted the problem of acid rain, the effort for no on 23 is a nonpartisan effort. This is an issue that transcends party divisions and is important to all of California and for that matter, the United States and the world. I'm glad that it's not party lines. It's not conservative versus liberals. It's us versus dirty oil. And that's all this comes down to. Prop 23 is dirty, completely dirty. AB 32 is meant to clean up our air and, and our quality of life. In 2006, AB 32 came on board as a clean admission standard to get oil refineries to reduce their emissions. We have got to continue our clean air laws and moving in the right direction and becoming less dependent on fossil fuels and really seek out those renewable sources of energy. California is blessed with so much sunshine. It's a domestic fuel source, and as solar costs are coming down, it's not only great because it's clean and green, but it's also at a cost point that's making it very affordable. It could be the leader again. California could be the leader in wind. Gee, it's beautiful. It's just wind. You know, and there's always more of it. There's always, it's not gonna stop. I see EVs, electric vehicles, and filling an area of local transportation, daily transportation, because it's the cleanest. The renewable energies industry really experienced a great growing business. There was customers wanting to buy and support renewables. We saw large companies wanting to go green just on their own. We saw, you know, job growth. We all know it's clean energy is the better way to go. If I look around as a green tech engineer, a lot of the open positions, open jobs, are in California dealing with green vehicles. Green tech is, is, is booming, and it's, it's one of the ways that we can replace a lot of jobs that our country has lost. When the recession hit in the fall of 08, I lost a job as a quality auditor at a box factory. Subsequently, we were kicked out of our house, didn't get unemployment insurance. Clean energy has provided me with employment, and for that I'll be eternally grateful. When I got laid off, the family got laid off. I was a single mother. It was definitely hard because I didn't have anybody on the financial side helping me. I lost my house, and I was dealing with creditors, had to file bankruptcy for two years. I could not find a job. I couldn't find a job anywhere and found help and found a job in renewables, and I love it. You know, it's just a good field to be in. It's growing. I'm just very thankful that I'm in this field and paying my bills again. Having been employed in the semiconductor industry for 16 years, having that taken away, it's definitely hard for my family. Bills start to pile up and uh, the baby's born. 
insurances are no longer active, so you have to pay out of pocket for everything. We were very desperate for a year. I work now in a company that is a renewable industry. Renewables is uh, something that my family could depend on, something that is growing, something that is keeping not only my family afloat, but also provides jobs for other people. Renewable energy means job for me. Coming from the auto industry that shut down, we lost over 5,000 jobs. Renewable energy is a breath of fresh air, really, for, for me and my family to, to have a job and for the future. I was unemployed for four months looking for a job, and the renewable energy market was, was a lot bigger than just about any of the other markets that I was, I was looking into. It's really exciting to know that so many people can be touched in so many different ways by one industry and one, one dream. There are people who are working who wouldn't be working. What Big Oil is saying is that clean energy kills jobs. That's a fallacy, it's not true. Clean energy has added jobs for my firm. It's added jobs in record numbers here in California, and these are good paying jobs. A lot of the people who are working out here stay at the hotels, go out to the restaurants, and shop in the stores, so that really makes the uh, local people very happy. You know, not only do we have the wind farms, but we've actually got manufacturing here for the wind turbines as well. So the wind companies are our biggest employers for the area. Tessero and Valero, they're masquerading this as a jobs initiative, when in fact what it would actually do is undermine the most dynamic section of the economy um, because clean tech jobs are growing at a rate 10 times faster than the rest of the economy. And this is the last time when you want to turn off the faucet for this portion of the economy. This is, this is the future of California and really oil is the past. The Oil companies, they've taken millions of dollars, poured it into Prop 23 to, to trick us into saying, well, this is gonna create jobs. It's not gonna create jobs, it's going to kill jobs. Prop 23 is nothing but a job killing bill. There have been 500,000 clean jobs in California since the start of the clean energy, and this is gonna kill jobs across the board for renewable energy. Well, it's really very critical that we uh, defeat 23 and keep uh, the capital flowing into California and use this renewable energy, green energy uh, uh, boom to fuel our, uh, our economic recovery. The exciting thing about the renewable energy piece is that it's going to create jobs that did not exist. We need to stop talking about the jobs that have been lost to China and Burma and India. Those jobs are not coming back. We have got to find new and renewable energy ways to create new jobs, and it's just gonna be an economic boom. It's gonna be an explosion that we haven't seen before in this country. That's how big this whole renewable energy piece is. The center of the solar job growth is right here in California. We have about 60% of the market in the United States and hundreds of companies, tens of thousands of people working in this industry. This industry is exploding, this technology is affordable, and it's creating jobs and energy security right here at home in California. I came to California because it was the first place, it was the first place the military sent me. One of the reasons I really care about this proposition, this it's fair to call it a dirty oil proposition, dirty energy proposition, is it puts at risk what's beautiful about California. Our hand is being forced. Our military uh, and, our, and the men and women who, who, can, who, who followed me in uniform uh, continue to be deployed around the world uh, because we have an economy tied to dirty oil. There's no question that No on 23 is a great environmental statement but it's also a patriotic statement. It's also saying as an American, as a Californian, we want energy independence. We want to make sure that we are standing on our own economically and that we're not importing petroleum. If there are two things you remember about Prop 23 and why it's so devastating for us, understand one, it would knock out all the clean energy jobs and the growth we're going to see in an incredibly vibrant and large part of the economy. And the second part is, it's really bad for the health of Californians. I have patients that come and see me and they tell me that they can't breathe. There's many things that are outside of their control. The air quality, the pollution is outside of their control. 
to not be able to help your patients, that's what doctors are supposed to do, right? We're supposed to help our patients. We're supposed to help them feel better or to fix them or to cure them. And when you can't do that, that's, um, it's very heartbreaking when you can't do that. Proposition 23 is gonna exacerbate smog and potentially negate a bunch of years of progress we have already made in cleaning up the air. These oil companies are putting this proposition on our ballot for their bottom line, and it's at the detriment of California's public health. A ballot initiative that is funded primarily by the oil industry out of state, to me, represents um, a disaster. It makes me angry that greed and profit are what's behind uh, Proposition 23, that it's gonna affect our air quality and all for what? So the oil companies will have some more money. The fact that we're getting this much attention from them shows that we're cutting into their profits and that renewable energy is starting to uh, scare them. A no vote on Prop 23 is absolutely essential for protecting California's economy. When you really look at it, the right decision for everybody is to vote no on Prop 23. The American Lung Association feels strongly that Prop 23 must be defeated. Prop 23 is a threat, and I would definitely say no is the right choice. And no on Prop 23. Proposition 23 is a job killer. It's a vote for dirty energy. It's a vote for dirty air. I wish that they would spend their money and their efforts in terms of cleaning up their refineries rather than trying to pass Proposition 23. I can't underline enough the importance of no on 23. Prop 23 is, is an attempt to cut the legs out from under the new energy economy. We must vote no on Prop 23. It is a matter of life and death. for by No One 23, Californians to Stop the Dirty Energy Proposition, sponsored by business and environmental organizations for clean energy and jobs. Major funding by Thomas Steyer and National Wildlife Federation.